Hi, welcome to another exciting adventure with Elliot. This time we're going to be doing more maintenance, but we're going to be able to show you the indoor section because this is property management, so there's nobody to tell me no. Unfortunately, the hardest part of property management is getting access. So the first thing we're going to do is make it through all the security. Now that I've got in, my next move is going to be to turn off the thermostat so I can work on the air handler. If you have a UV light though, make sure you hit the breaker because you can't have that thing on while you work on it. So let's see if I can figure out this nest. Blower delay just finished. Let's open up the cabinet. And if anybody was wondering why I didn't hashtag nest, no. Nah. Inspect the inside of the doors and make sure that there's no growth or any nastiness on them. These ones are actually both pretty shiny. See? Now we're going to do a general visual inspection of the cabinet and check and see how the lining looks, which this is all lovely and very intact. If you had growth on this, you would want to take some sort of antimicrobial or cleaner and then wipe all that down. We can also inspect the blower wheel which we do have a little growth here and dust and dirt and crap and we'll wipe that off. But the blower wheel itself looks pretty, yeah, not worth a clean. It's not really that dirty. It just looks bad in that light. We're also going to check the underside of the EVAP coil. I'll use my phone for that. Again, that coil looks pretty clean. There's a few little spots, but it's not worth trying to pull it out and clean the whole thing, trust me. Uh, we'll be able to see if there's actually any issue, but from what I can see on the outside and the inside, it's fine, it's clean, it's good. Our next chore is going to be cleaning the drain, which is the biggie on most maintenances. So I need to flush from the drain pan, and I also need to flush out the clean out. You can see here, the clean out isn't actually too far uh, the way they did this one. A lot of times you'll see it like after the horizontal run down here, but this one's right here. I'm gonna take this off. I'm gonna feel around and see if I can feel a lot of buildup that I'm worried about, which this feels pretty clear to me. You can also look for gunk in your drain pan. This stuff here is the dried sludge. We're actually in the middle of winter right now or about whatever winter is for Florida. Um, so we're not making a whole lot of condensate, but that's what that would be, it would be sliminess. So we're gonna scrub that off, and we're gonna flush the drain pan, uh, so we get the these connections here, and then we'll hit from here to the outside. Where are my manners? I have been forgetting to introduce you to my tools. This is my funnel, hashtag flow tool. No idea who they are, I got it off Amazon, and they don't need a hashtag, believe me. I think this began life as a jug of Heinz white vinegar. So, hashtag Heinz. Of course, everybody knows the Home Depot. My maintenance bucket. And water's universal, hashtag God. All right, so I'm gonna start by wetting this gunk so I can scrub it out. If it still feels slimy or if it's nice and smooth. Yeah. I'm gonna get a, uh, a big panduit strap and get underneath the coil if I can. Some ports are easier to get than others. Okay, I don't have my big panduit strap, but what I do have is this lovely brush. And the hole is tiny, my brush will not fit. Hmm, but we did get a little something. Cool. 
I think on carrier coils, those are actually a little bit taller and you can get a panduit strap all the way back there. I'm gonna go get more water. We're gonna keep flushing this until it comes out clear in the vacuum, okay? When will my reflection show who I am? All right, you can see we got some sediment out of there. Some of that's dirt from cleaning the condenser. Not a whole lot of scum, but we'll probably give it one more for good measure. Make sure it comes out clear and then fill up our trap again. Clear. And now for some lovely footage of me refilling the trap. You can do it from the outside too. I like to do it from the inside where possible. Pour slow and make sure you give it a chance to burp and get rid of any air bubbles. That way you don't accidentally cause a problem. Uh, if you have an air trap in there, it won't drain right. Alright, I got the trap refilled, no air bubbles, and now it's time for fun with chemicals. Hashtag Viper Cleaners by Refrigeration Technologies. They're in the same bottle, but look, you can clearly see that one is a different color than the other. I promise they're two different products. This one's going to go in my drain pan. Fun little enzyme treatment. You can pause and read all of this. Ooh, look, directions. Uh -huh. Along the bottom of the coil. That's plenty. And then our no rinse cleaner for up here. Well, that quote really wasn't that bad. Just a dash. And then I'm gonna put some on a rag and I'm gonna wipe that mess off. Looking a lot shinier now. Just some dust and some stuff that we got off of there. I also tried to wipe down some of the wiring here. Um, that one there was pretty stained and it's not really causing any issue. And no one will appreciate this except for me and the gremlins that make the blower wheel turn. All right, now I'm going to test my float switch. So let's make sure how it's wired. You'll see this in a couple different configurations. The most common one that we, the one that we do here is uh, we break R with the float switch, but sometimes you'll see somebody break Y instead. Um, both work, uh, but it's easier to, I can test this one without the, just by checking to see if the thermostat goes blank, unless it has batteries. Our little bird's nest up there is gonna give us an error code telling us that the wiring is improper. All right, so we're gonna take this, I'm gonna clean out the float, because I got water in it while I was cleaning the drain, hashtag Rubbermaid. Use a separate one for the turkey, I think that's common sense. Suck up all this water. And also look at the pitch on these. This one isn't a big deal because it's just coming out straight from the unit, but a lot of times you'll see them piped over to the side. You want your float switch to be like perfectly level or slightly up, but never higher than the drain pan and not pitch down or it'll trip when it doesn't need to. This guy I'm gonna leave intentionally tripped like this. And then I'm gonna go check the thermostat and see what it says. All right. Let's watch the rat nest freak out. Just cool. Actually, you know what? I probably have to make it freak out. Let's see here. <laughs> Equipment. Oh, look at that. We have no power to R. So that switch works. Error number 1E195, no power to R wire detected. Learn more. Tech info. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. So now, since we're in heating season, I'm going to burn off the heat strips. A lot of times when home on the heat strips here in Florida, whoa, that was close. For the first time, it makes a terrible smell because uh, all the dust and stuff that collects on them. So one of the things we do in winter season maintenance is, is burn off the heat strips. Um, different thermostats are a little bit different. This particular nest, I have to actually engage it manually. There is no aux heat function. 
So I can choose tests and I can choose to test the auxiliary heating. And then we'll go take an amp draw on it and make sure that they're running. All right, you can't smell it, but I certainly can. The heat strips are running, but I'm gonna double check with my meter, hashtag field piece. I think I did that last video. Um, but we're gonna check and make sure the amp draw is good. I already checked the breaker sizing. It's a 60 amp breaker on this guy, so I don't know what size heat kit they have in here. They never marked it anywhere. But as long as we're pulling less than 60 amps, we should be good. I hit the select button so you can clearly see here we are measuring both volts and amps. So now I'm going to pick a wire and I'm going to hook onto it. I'm reading 20, 21.08, which means we've got a 5k heat kit in here. I'm pretty sure that breaker is oversized for this. I have checked the data tag on the unit. I don't know if y'all can get a good picture of that. I'll include a picture, a small one, but it is a 5K heat kit, so I can now mark it. So it is, this is the model number on it. The tonnage of our unit is a four and a half ton, so I should be pulling 23, 26 amps for, two, uh, for this heat kit. Our breaker is actually oversized. They have a 60 amp breaker on here, so I'm gonna to recommend to the property manager that we downsize that for compliance reasons and safety reasons. What's first? Safety's first. Look kids, 208. It makes a difference. Alrighty, now that I have burned off the heat strips and we've made an important safety discovery, uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is button up the cabinet, uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and run it in cool mode and check the pressures. Uh, the other thing I should do is also check change my filters, which I will not be showing you because it's tedious and I don't have them. Don't worry, we'll return and drop them off. Airflow probes. You know where these go. If you said one on the return and one on the supply, you're correct. Now that I've finished the cleaning, I have probes on and all I have to do is sit back and wait for my lovely field piece probes to Bluetooth all that lovely info to my measure plate. Hopefully this isn't end of like the last adventure. The condenser's running. That's a good sign. All right. Unlike last time, we're doing a lot better pressures wise. There's our return temperature. I like my vapor set to be 30 to 35 below my return temperature. Superheat is looking good. Subcool is a little low. This system is brand new though. I'm not worried about it. No sign of leaks this time. I think we're good to go. Um, I think I did everything. I can't think of anything that I missed. I'm pretty sure I got it all. And if you can think of something I didn't do, then I did do it and I just didn't video it. Ha! I think that's about it for basic maintenance. We've covered the outdoor now and we've covered the indoor. Um, yeah, after this, let's move on to diagnostics and see if we can find something broken to fix. Everybody, stay safe and have fun. Bye! Thanks for watching. If you're willing, give this video a thumbs up and drop us a comment. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to stay updated with all of our future videos. And as a quick reminder, HVAC School isn't just a YouTube channel. Dive deeper with us at our main website, hvacrschool.com. Curious for more knowledge on the go? We've got you covered. Tune into the HVAC School podcast available on all your favorite podcast apps. And while you're at it, join our thriving Facebook group. Also, don't miss out on our free mobile applications available for both iPhone and Android. We're all about community. Vortex by Tex.